Handmade ceramic bowls are not only functional, they can be made by children, by artists, by your local everyday citizens. Just looking at bowls like this, I find inspiring. I want to stop everything and just create. But I wonder how exciting this would be to me if I didn't know where the next meal was coming from. If I couldn't fill those bowls with food for my children. Empty Bowls is an art-based fundraising event to help fill bowls to feed hungry people. My first personal encounter with Empty Bowls was in 2013. We went to Selma, Alabama to see the bridge where Martin Luther King led the Freedom March in 1965. I'm always looking for the local art events, so we went to the Chamber of Commerce and inquired, and the ladies there said we had just missed a big art event. But if we were interested in art, we might want to stay that night and eat at Empty Bowls. She didn't explain, and we thought it was a restaurant. So we got a motel room, and we went back to the address that she had directed us to. But we were a little confused when we got there because it was a big, old, empty-looking warehouse. But there were a lot of cars outside. Inside, there were tables covered with handmade ceramic bowls. I wasn't sure what we were going to eat, but it was a feast for the eyes. They told us each to choose a bowl. I chose one with a little angel on the side, and my husband chose one with a leaf on its side. I noticed that the centerpieces on each table were African artifacts, and there was a donation box off to one side, which told me this was probably a fundraiser. I noticed a silent auction area, and I hustled over to that and started bidding on a slumped bottle that made a little cheese tray. I didn't get that bottle because at the last minute somebody outbid me. But when we first came in the door, they asked everyone where they were from. And being from Oklahoma, we were the attendees that were from the furthest distance away. So we won a bottle exactly like the one that I was bidding on, so I got a bottle anyway. The menu that night was soup and crackers or beans and cornbread with a dessert and a drink. My chicken soup served straight out of the crock pot was delicious and they provided entertainment from local groups. Then they turned the program over to a missionary who said he was serving in Kenya and this indeed was a fundraiser to provide money to feed people in Kenya. We still have our bowls to remind us of that night and we visited that donation box before we left and we left with warm fuzzies and good memories. It was a great evening. But what we didn't leave with was the full story. I thought how clever those Selma people were to think this up, to have a fundraiser for their Kenya missionaries, but that wasn't exactly right. I started hearing that other people were doing this in other communities, and so I started to Google the information. And I learned that an art teacher named John Hordom and his wife, Lisa Blackburn, in the school year 1990-91, challenged his art students to make 120 bowls. The purpose was to conduct a one-time, yes, one-time, event in their school to show how art was important to the community, to conduct a fundraiser to feed the hungry, and to provide students an opportunity to help their community. Well, little did they know then that they were the grassroots beginning of a program to help fight hunger, not only on a local basis, a national basis, but an international basis. There are empty bowl programs all around the world today. Mr. Horton's students not only accepted the challenge of making the bowls and feeding the staff who came to the fundraiser, but at the end of the event, they gave their bowls to the people who ate out of them. And of course, the profits went to feed the hungry. Today, each empty bowl event varies somewhat from event to event, depending on who's planning and what resources are available. Basically, it goes back to an art event, a ceramic bowl event, although 
There are artists who come in with different kinds of bowls. We've seen wooden, metal, and even paper. Now, you probably couldn't eat out of a paper tube bowl like this, but it could go in the silent auction. Bowls are typically made by artists and by school children. We would welcome any handmade bowl donations. Most empty bowl events ask for food donations from merchants or individuals, organizations, or churches, anyone who wants to donate food to be cooked by volunteers. Volunteers do all the setup and the serving. Donations are also acquired for silent auction items. And any extra things that you do at your event are just according to the resources you have in your own community. An art teacher friend in Europe said previous to her empty bowl event, some parents wanted to learn to make clay bowls so they gave a little workshop and taught the parents how to make ceramic bowls and then the parents donated those bowls to empty bowls and then came and bought them back the evening of the event. They charged a small fee for that workshop and that made an extra little profit for the empty bowl event. And since we're speaking of money, the way we're getting started with our empty bowl event is that Glenpool Foundation for Academic Excellence awarded us a grant. All of that money went for art supplies for children to make bowls and posters for this upcoming event. It's a wonderful program for the kids in the schools. It's a wonderful program for the community so that we will not need grants in the future. We will save back a small percentage of the profits that we would need for art supplies for next year's event. And the rest of the profits will be donated to our local food bank, Mercy Mission 2. Like most Empty Bowls events, we will be dependent upon the community for donations for things like food and silent auction items. We're also going to need a host of volunteers, so we hope you'll get in contact with us. If you're thinking, I don't know how I could help, give us a call. We know how you could help. We have a very long list and we can match you to something on that list. We need your help.